Hello YouTube, welcome to my channel where we talk about vintage watches and where I show you a few of the timepieces in my collection. Today, we're going to talk about a very special and iconic piece, the automatic Redland Cross Ring. It is a luxury Swiss watch that can range anywhere from a few thousand dollars um, to tens of thousands of dollars depending on the condition and the case material of the watch on the second-hand market. Redlin is a very prestigious uh, Swiss watch manufacturer. They've been in business for well over 100 years now, uh, well known throughout the world. So a large part of the value of the watch, uh, of course, is in the brand recognition. But it is oftentimes very difficult to tell the difference between a standstill Breitling and a white gold Breitling. <laughs> Aside from the price tag, of course, uh, yellow gold and rose gold are uh, more obvious in appearances. High-end watch manufacturers like Rolex or Breitling like to offer their customers the options of purchasing the same watch model with either stainless steel or other precious metal. Oftentimes, watch manufacturers will stamp tiny markings or engraving on the back of the case which indicate what the watch is made out of. But these markings are oftentimes very small and almost impossible to distinguish without a special jeweler's loop. With this Breitling, we will tell the case material by the reference number on the back of the watch, J44355. The first letter of the reference number tells us what the case material of our watch is made out of. So if you look at this chart and look for the letter J, you can see that our watch is made out entirely of solid white gold. If our reference number started with the letter A, then it means that it was made out of stainless steel. And if the reference number started with the letter K, then it means that it was solid yellow gold, and so on. Now you might be wondering why someone would pay a lot more for the white gold model rather than the stainless steel if they basically look very similar and have pretty much the same functionality. White gold is generally better suited for people who like to keep a low profile but they still at the same time want to have a high value watch. Um, you know yellow gold might be too flashy for them so um, instead of going for the yellow gold they might want to go for the white gold instead to better fit their needs. Low key, you know what I mean? So this watch is considered a chronograph. And a chronograph is an instrument used for recording time with great accuracy. It basically just means that it has a stopwatch functionality. There are two buttons on the side of this watch. The top one is used to start and stop the stopwatch. The bottom one is used to reset the watch. The middle crown is used to adjust time and wind the watch. There are many other chronograph with a very similar layout. For example, this is my Omega Speedmaster. It also has two buttons on the side and a crown in the middle. If I were to press the top button, the second hand would start ticking. If I were to press it again, the second hand would stop. If I wanted to reset it, I would press the bottom button and the second hand would move back to the same position. I might do a review on this watch in the future. Automatic movement watches are generally a lot thicker than your traditional port watch due to all the complex mechanism within it. So this is my battery power port watch. It is my daily driver and as you can see it's a lot thinner. Uh, believe it or not, it actually keeps better time than some of my more expensive automatic watches. And I only have to change the battery every few years, once every few years. So if I've actually replaced the strap on this watch. Uh, to a authentic Redland leather band. Um, some people prefer the metal band. Um, I just like the comfort of a leather strap better. Thank you for watching this video. Like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you want to watch more vintage watch content. Leave a comment below if you have any questions. Thanks again.